Good evening, everyone, if we will take a ways to our seats. Thankful to be here today. Thankful that we're here together. There's power when we come together. And I'm just thankful to be here to be able to praise the Lord and give him praise for the safety that he's gave us today. He made a way for us to be together in this place, and I'm thankful for that. If you have a, a need in the place, if you will raise your hand as we go into prayer, let's just pray for the ones that are not here tonight, the ones that are sick, and let's just go to the Lord with the needs that we got, because he is able to meet these needs. Lord, we're just thankful that you allowed us to be here tonight. Lord, I know that you're going to perform a mighty work in this place tonight, and Lord, I'm just praying that you will touch the needs that are in this house tonight. Lord, there is folks with sickness and pain and, and things in their body, Lord. And Lord, I know that you're willing and able to do it, Lord. And I just pray that we have the faith in us tonight to know that you can do all things. But Lord, I pray that you will till up the fallow grounds that is within us. Break up that hardness of dirt, Lord. Prepare our hearts tonight for the word that you have for us. And, Lord, let our minds be connected to you in this teaching that we are going to get, Lord. And, Lord, I pray that we shuck off everything that's of this world. And, Lord, we step into the arena of you, Lord, and we let you take over and have authority in this place. But, Lord, I pray that your ways will be known to us tonight. And, Lord, I just love you and I'm thankful. Show us your glory, show us your glory. 
everything. It reminds me of the, the Samaritan woman at the at the well when he read everything to her and told her everything that she had done, but it changed her life. She walked away a different person, just like the man that was possessed with the demons. He casted them out, but he was changed forever. He wasn't the same person he was when he was when he showed up to the feet of Jesus. We're not the same when we show up to the feet of Jesus. When we leave and we're filled with the Holy Ghost, we are changed. He did a new work in his church. I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost. I'm thankful for the things that he has done in my life, for the things he has taken out of my life. I'm thankful that I, when I show up with a need, he is able to meet that need. I just have, I just have to have the faith to believe that he can do it. That's right. And I'm thankful that he's always with us. Always working on us. We will get the ways to give on the board. We got GiveLify, PayPal, and RiverbendPentecostals.com. Cash and checks can be mailed to Riverbend Pentecostals, 1031 Mill Street, P.O. Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. We got text to give, 833 883 9311. And if you would, if you have faith, Let's say this. Let's say this prayer tonight with faith. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given unto me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs. Raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and serving God, perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. Come and give, please. Lord, we pray your kingdom come. Lord, we
just praise him right now for the things that he has done. I'm thankful that he never changes. I'm thankful that he, he is always the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. He's always the same. He's always on the throne, and he's always watching out for us. Thankful for the Lord. Thankful for the blessings that we have. A wonderful church, great pastor, great praise team. Just thankful. We're blessed in many ways never want to take it for granted. Yes. I want to show up here with praise on my lips every time that I show up into yes. this place. I want to praise him for what he's given me and for what he's done in my life. As we turn the mic over to Sister Callie. We're thankful for Sister Callie too. You can be seated. turn that fast. 
So um, I guess most everybody knows yesterday was Sister Amanda's 35th birthday. Um, we love Sister Amanda, don't we? Oh, I guess. Um, I'll make this fast. John, I, I mean, I could talk for the next hour as fast as my mama and still not <laughs> scratch the surface of what Sister Amanda is to us at the River Bend. Um, I was thinking about Ladies' Conference um, when she walked across the stage to receive our River Bend Memorial, um, Mother's Memorial Re Award or whatever it was, recognition. We were so proud. I've never been more proud in all my life. But I feel that Deb, right? When she walked across that stage, who was her number one fan? Deb. <laughs> the whole, everybody, everybody knew where Deb went to church. I'm telling you. But I, um, I feel that way anytime I see her. If I'm in the dollar store or here, you know, her smile radiates and lights up the entire room. And it, she's just as beautiful on the inside as she is on the outside. Yes, so, yes. so, so thankful. <laughs> she wears a lot of hats, and I was going to go into all of that, but I'm not going to. But the biggest hat she wears, besides being a mama and a mammy, is um, our pastor's wife. Um, she, uh, she, he has said this many times before. She, com she completes him. She is the very best part of him. This isn't just Brother GL's ministry. It's their ministry together. Their heartbeat together for the river bend. I know Brother GL, he said this before I'm not saying this. He wouldn't be where he is today if it wasn't for his backbone, Sister Amanda. Encouragement, his biggest supporter, his biggest prayer warrior, because I promise you he don't get up here before us until he has fought every demon that's trying to get him. So he's his prayer warrior, the very best part of him, her heart. And everything that she is is such a blessing to the Rivermen and every one of us here. Yes, yes. We are, I know for a fact, not our, only are we covered by Brother Giel's prayers, we are covered by hers as well. We love you. I think there's a picture of her gift. Where's she? Yay! <laughs> we love you. I know there's... I know there's going to be a lot of sweet tea with Lottie. Drink on that little sweet. There's a miracle in the house. Right? <laughs> this is a miracle because normally I'm too shy and I don't want to say anything. It's very awkward receiving a gift in front of all these people, but... Um, the last time, Mother's Day, I guess, uh, some people gave me some dirty looks because I didn't say thank you. I do. I thank you all from the bottom of my heart. And you can ask my mama. You could give me, you could go to Goodwill and buy me an old pair of used shoes, and I'm very thankful for it. I mean, you, growing up, when I was a little girl, I didn't go for the big present under the Christmas tree. I went for the stocking first because I wanted those little things. So I'm, I've, I've, you can give me whatever, and I'm very thankful for it. I love everything. And I love every one of y'all, and thank y'all for everything. As we will have the youth and the kids come up. Get ready to pray for them. If you would, just.
just stretch your hands forward right now. And let's just pray. Pray for these young ones and these youth that the Lord would lead and guide them. Lord, we just love you, Lord. We're thankful for you. Thankful for the ways that you are working in each and every one of these youth's life and these kids' life. Lord, I pray that you will cover them every day with protection, Lord. I pray that their homes have peace and joy and happiness every day. But Lord, I pray that the word is in them, Lord. I pray that it speaks to them in, the, in their darkest times, Lord. And I pray that it lights their path that you want them to walk in. And Lord, just always send them and raise them up in the way that you want. In Jesus' name. Braxton, you can lead them back, brother. As we get ready for the pastor to come up. I'm thankful for pastor. I'm thankful for Sister Amanda, too. They both do great things for our church, and they're always consecrating themselves. So. Thank you, Brother Terrence. Thank you all for blessing my wife. Don't let me see you giving her no dirty look because it's going to be on like a pot of neck bones. I'll take a whole lot of stuff from you. You mess with my woman, you through dealing. Just ask my kids. They're a little jealous of her. My kids are jealous of their mama because they say everything's about her. Everything he does, that's for her. Everything. He don't, we don't get to come first ever. Nope. Nope. You ain't going to either. Good to see everybody here tonight. And thank you for coming tonight. What a blessing. What a blessing to be in the house of the Lord on Wednesday night. And, uh. I know there ain't no cure for the summertime blues, and they're on us almost, but uh, uh, you better be ready. It's going to thank God for air conditioner on Sunday. That's what they're telling me anyway, And uh, but uh, the Lord ain't worried about that, neither am I, but uh, I'm so happy to be here tonight, so I love Wednesday nights. I look forward to it. Um, in the start beginning tomorrow morning, Sunday will be my favorite service, but beginning Monday morning, Wednesday will be my favorite service. And, and sometimes uh, uh, when we have the men get together and pray, and, and I just like being here. Amen. I like being here. So if you recall, tonight we're going to, by the help of the Lord, we're going to finish up what we started last week. We'll do a little bit of reviewing. Uh, I did not make enough handouts. I made about 50. Did she really? I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Thank you, brother. I'm not surprised, but it is the same one. And uh, so. <laughs> Hey, I like it. I like it. Yeah. I, uh, I will tell you, just before we get into the Word, if you're not reading the bread this year, it's the best it's ever been. And I know it's the same, it's the same Bible, but I'm getting stuff out of the bread this year that I have never, especially character studies. People, Brother David, like kings and stuff, are jumping out at me so clearly now this year, the, the, the humanity of the people in the Bible is a blessing to me because everybody whose name is written in the Bible, then Sister Maria mentioned something about, uh, uh, man, I, I don't want to get excited, but she mentioned something, I think, in elements about the begets and all so-and-so begets, so-and-so begets, so-and-so. Well, like yesterday or the day before, I read that there was a group of people that came to celebrate Passover, but they couldn't prove their lineage. Did y'all see that? Like, what? That's what all that begetting stuff is. Yeah, and there was some members of the priesthood. They couldn't go in because they couldn't prove their lineage. And I'm like, what? So all, all that starts making sense. You know, matters. Everybody matters. Everybody matters. I'm excited. Let's review a little bit. Doctrine. A confrontation 
with the divine will. Um, I, wrote, I wrote some other things down today, but I'm not going to share them with you just yet this time. But uh, we're in the identity of Jesus Christ. And uh, uh, I, I did not bring this out last week. I don't have it in my notes to bring out this week, but I will bring it out nevertheless. In Matthew chapter number 16, Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? And they said, Brother Burns referenced it on Sunday morning. They, uh, they said, Jeremiah or Isaiah or John the Baptist or one of the prophets. Then he said, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Then he said, blessed art thou Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood didn't tell you that but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee <coughs> that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, upon this rock I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I am convinced, though many people argue that Peter was the rock, that is not true. Peter was not the rock that the church was built on. The rock that God's church is built upon is the knowledge of who Jesus is. And that's what the gate of hell can't whoop. And you want to know why the gates of hell can't overcome that? Because God became flesh. And there was a man who went through everything. Why do you think it is the devil tried so hard to get Jesus Christ before he ever performed a miracle, before he ever healed the blinded eyes or did anything? The devil tried to sidetrack him because when Jesus Christ overcame the flesh, he didn't do it just for himself. He did it for all of us. Amen? Amen. You got to know who Jesus is. Now, the words where I'm going to start at in my review from John chapter 1, verses 1, and then especially verse number 14, but we covered 1 through 18 when we studied it. But for review, we'll tell you that word W-O-R-D comes from the Greek word logos, L-O-G-O-S, or logos, and it is described as God leaving deity and connecting with humanity. It is the way that God connected with us. There are three issues in God connecting with us. The first one is we don't know him. The second is we can't connect to him. And the third one is the reason we can't connect to him is because of sin. And he cannot violate his righteousness and if we enter his presence with sin then we violate his righteousness so the revelation connection and sin so jesus came to reveal god to man to reestablish a connection between god and every man that's important every human being you know can be saved charles manson he could have been saved jeffrey dahmer he could have been saved you got to believe that. You got to believe. Judas, I firmly believe Judas could have been restored. He could have repented and the Lord would have restored him. For every man. So he revealed God to man, reestablish a connection between God or make a connection available between God and every man. And he came to be the sacrifice that satisfied the sin penalty once and for all. So, we, we studied last week, answered these questions. Who is Jesus Christ? Well, he is the incarnation, meaning the manifestation of God in the flesh. He is the incarnation of the one God of Deuteronomy 6 and 4, of Genesis 1 and 1 throughout the Old Testament, Elohim, El Shaddai, Adonai, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Isi, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Sidkenu, so on and so forth. Jesus Christ is the manifestation. Does anybody want to tell us what manifestation means? Reveal, made to be seen. Jesus was the incarnation, the manifestation of God in the flesh. We learned in Colossians chapter 2 in several verses, but especially verse number 9, for in him, for in Jesus Christ, dwelleth all, everybody say all, all. 
the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And the Godhead is all who God is, was, and ever will be, was in Jesus Christ. We learn that Jesus is God. Isaiah 9 and 6 calls him the mighty God. Matthew 1 and 23 says, You bring forth the Son and call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Thomas, when he, we, we just read that today, or you will read that today, I believe it is, in the book of John, when Thomas is not there when Jesus reveals himself, but then Jesus comes back and says, here's the, home, here's the, 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 the holes in my hands and, and my feet and my side. He said, go ahead and touch it because I want you to believe. And Thomas, there's no record Thomas touched it, but when he saw it, he fell down and said, my Lord and my God. Romans 9 and 5 in the New Living Translation tells us that he is God. Uh, 1 Timothy 3 and 16, I said 26, but it's 3 and 16, which says, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. So Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. Titus 2 and 13 says he is our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus, I got a little ahead of myself. I started moving too fast because I want to make sure I get done tonight. Jesus is the Father incarnate. Now, we just said he's God incarnate, but he's also the Father incarnate. There's not a separate Father. Because the Bible does say God's his Father, and it says the Holy Ghost is his Father. That which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. That's what the angel told Joseph. Jesus was the Father incarnate because Isaiah 9 and 6 also says, and his name shall be called Everlasting Father. John 10 and 30, Jesus said, I and my Father are one. John 14 and 9, he said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And 1 John 3 and 5 he says the Father manifested himself to take away sins. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sin, and in him is no sin. The reason why he was manifested to take away our sins, who else was going to do it? You remember we talked to you. Have you read that in the book of Ezekiel? We talked about that last week. The Lord said, I look for somebody. I looked for a man who would stand in the gap and who would make up the hedge. And he said, didn't find one. Didn't find one. The reason why God was manifest in the flesh to take away our sins is somebody had to die and there was not a perfect human. Okay. Everybody all right? This is, this is review. You got this all last week. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God was in Jesus Christ. And Jesus identified himself with the Holy Ghost because in John 14 and 17, he says, even the Spirit, capital S, Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But he said to the disciples, but you know him. And here's how you know him. It's because he lives with you now. He dwells with you now, but he shall be in you. Who's dwelling with them? Jesus. Who's going to be in them? Spirit of God, Jesus Christ, manifest. Now, Acts 2 and 33, we're talking about the Holy Spirit was in Jesus Christ, or Jesus identified with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit was a part of Jesus Christ because Acts 2 and 33 says... Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this, which you both now see and hear. The way they were acting after they received the Holy Ghost and what they were saying after they'd received the baptism of the Holy Ghost was a pouring out. Shed means pour out, empty out. And Peter kind of did say, this is that, spoken by the prophet Joel, 
when in the last days saith God, I will pour out. pour out. But the book says Jesus shed it, poured it out. Hmm. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Persons, yes. Well, the reason is, and I mean no disrespect when I say this, but the reason is, it is a common refrain among Trinitarian theologians that you have to accept the Trinity by faith. Okay? Now, the truth is, Brother Terrence, I do not have to accept the incarnation by faith because Jesus said, that's who I am. All right? He was declaring, man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Lord, I, was, I, I thought I was coming out of the gate kind of slow, but, but the power, I, the things I was reading today about the connection between our love for the Word and our success in living for God, there is a connection between your, the love of the word and your relationship with God, you are what you believe. And the more truth you believe is revealed to you and you believe, the more you become like Jesus. For some reason or the other, we think that that's a spiritual occurrence, but it is a collaborative effort between the spirit and the flesh. The spirit is the spiritual aspect, and the flesh is the study to show thyself approved unto God. Remember what I told you all? You cannot just hold on to the Bible and hope it osmosises into you. I know that's not a word. You can't leave it on your nightstand and hope it gets into you. You've got to put the effort in to get it. Now, Thank you for that, Sister Nadine. It is very true. I've shared with you all many times how Brother Terry, whoo, I can't remember all, I think there was five churches he got saved in. Sister Maria's husband who has passed on. And uh, I can't remember. I'm not even going to try to name them because I can't remember. I think I remember four, but I can't remember the fifth one. But he got saved, baptized, sanctified, whatever you call it in every one of them. But he said not one of them dealt with this from a biblical perspective. Not one of them dealt with Acts chapter 2 and verse number 38 as it is written. Not one of them. He said, as a matter of fact, until I came here, every church I was ever in skipped it. Skipped over it. Now, the reason is you cannot read the word under the influence of the Holy Ghost and get anything out of it but truth. And if your heart is right, and when I mean your heart is right, that means your desire is in the right place. Everybody okay? I feel like when your desire is in the right place, you don't have to have it all together, but you'll get it all together. Because he promised it. He promised it. Said the Spirit will lead and guide you into all truth. You've read Acts the 18th chapter. I know you have. If not, you will be shortly. When Apollos was going around preaching mightily, being used of God, knowing only the baptism of John. And the Bible said, Whom when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him unto them and expounded the word of God to him more perfectly and then he started preaching that Jesus was the Christ. Right. Jesus was the Messiah. Baptism in Jesus' name, the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Right. Cornelius was a devout man. He prayed and gave so much and an angel came down from heaven. Right. But you read Acts chapter 10, verse 44, 45, 46, 47, and all of that. First thing is the angel 
I know I'm off the reservation, but I feel like I'm in the Holy Ghost. The angel couldn't tell Cornelius what to do to be saved. Because angels don't know. But he said, go find a preacher whose name is Peter, who's staying by the seashore in Joppa, living with Simon the Tanner. He'll tell you what to do. And then Peter shows up, and I love it because the first thing he figures out is the Lord ain't got no prejudice in him. But you read, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. And then they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Cornelius was so devout he prayed an angel down, but he still needed to hear the truth. Okay, excuse me, I got excited at the wrong time, pardon me, excuse me, but look here, the mission of Jesus Christ, remember, we got to know him, got to re be revealed to us, we got to be connected to him, and none of those things can happen without the sin problem being dealt with, right? Okay, so everybody okay with that? Everybody, everybody all right with that? Revelation, connection, sin. So the first thing he did was Jesus revealed God. John chapter 1 and verse number 18. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son which is in the bosom, in the heart, in the, in the, the, the moral and mental makeup of God, he hath declared him. Everybody say declare. declare. That word means led out completely. Thoroughly bring forth the revelation of God, the mighty God, is in Christ Jesus. John chapter 1 verse number 18 says it, meaning that everything we need to know about God, we find in Jesus Christ. Now, the second thing he did, revealing, declaring God, he said, I, I am. John chapter 8 verse 58, we remember when Moses was in the wilderness, he's going to get the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage and take them back to the promised land. He said, who do I say send me? I am that I am. And it became a part of the fiber of the Jewish culture, the Jewish belief system, uh, their relationship with God. And when Jesus said in John 8, 58, Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, before... Before Abraham was, I am. That don't even make no sense in proper English unless he's God. The only way that makes sense is he's God. And those that he was speaking to, they heard and understood that Jesus was saying, I am. It doesn't matter if they believed it or not. They knew what he was saying. I am. He came, so he revealed God. He declared him, and he said, I am. So that's taking care of the declaration so that we might know him. That's why the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. If you're going through a trial, if you're going through a struggle, look unto Jesus. Is our example. So then the second problem is a connection problem. We can't be connected to God now because we got a sin problem. So let's learn about the connection, the ministry of reconciliation. Let me tell you just this little tidbit. You may write it down on your handout if you'd like to. I, I read, I can't remember where I read it. I think C.S. Lewis. But... He said, when you're reading the Bible, look for a reconciliation aspect in every scripture. Look for some way to that, because all of the scripture ultimately leads up to reconciliation. And everything there is in there is designed to present the possibility of being reconciled unto God. 
because we know. I want to ask you, I want you to think about something. I want you to think about something. I meant to say this in the beginning. Been, been, I'm, I'm trying to think. Been something wearing on me. Y'all know what I mean by that? The last few days, been wearing on me. Take an evaluation of your life. I'm talking about from the time you wake up until the time you go to bed. Take an evaluation of your life. And there are only two categories that you can list all your activities under. Worldly or godly. And find out just exactly how that balances out. Now, we know that ain't supposed to balance out even. If that balances out even, we have a deficit on the godly side. Okay? Because you can't love the world and love God. You're not of the world. And I know this doesn't seem like it connects with our stuff here, but I, I'm, I'm feeling an urgency. Well, Brother, Brother Burns brought the word Sunday. And he brought the word. We're fixing to realize a connection between what he preached and this Bible study. But the scripture says, if you believe not that I am, now in your Bible it says I am he. But if you look at it, the he is in italics, which means it was added by the translators for understanding purposes, but was not in the original translation. So he said, if you believe not that I am, you will die in your sins. Now, here's a problem. Here's why I brought that up. Revelation, last week and this week, is flowing. But revelation will not flow into your life without calling you to what's been revealed. He's not revealing this truth to you just so you can say I know it he's revealing this truth to us so we can be called to him in his fullness not just a story not just some cute songs or some songs that get you bumping and thumping but something but something that's going to keep you When it looks like hell is winning. When it feels like hell is winning. Now I brought this up last week if you recall. Hezekiah, they were under siege. And I like saying this name. Matter of fact, if y'all, some of y'all want to name your kids this, this might be all right. Rab Shaka. He comes out and says out loud in their language. You can read it. They said, please don't talk to us in our own language. He said, oh, I want them to hear what I'm saying. He said, don't believe what Hezekiah is saying to you. Now, they're under siege. You know what that means? Hungry, broke, defeated, having trouble. Hezekiah said, keep on trusting the Lord. Rabshakeh said, what you trusting him for? How's that working out for you? I'm serious. How's that working out for you? Think about this, Brother Derek, based on mine and your conversation. How's it working out when them wheels ain't turning? Huh? Y'all with me right now? Say, well, it, boy, I still feel, woo, I still feel the Holy Ghost. I don't know what's going on in my life that's different from your life, but sometimes it looks like the enemy's winning and it feels like the enemy's winning. Yeah, right. But I have to have a hold of something that lets me know that's a part of his scheme. Yeah. That's a lie. Yeah. That's a lie. Yeah. Hey, we got to get something. Let's, let me talk to the ladies from the mission for just a minute. I love every last one of y'all. 
but I'm tired of y'all graduating the program and telling me, boy, I'm coming to church all the time. I'm going to be a part of this church. I'm going to come here. You're my pastor, and I can't wait to be a part of it. I ain't seen none of them no more. Is that all right, Miss Jane? Is it all right for me to say that? You're still there. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. You too. Don't look at me like that. I'll smack you. Oh, Lindsay, y'all know good and well what I'm talking about. For, forget y'all. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But it's not, it's not, it's not just the mission girls. I'm just picking on y'all. Yeah, I didn't know you when you was at the mission. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, you were, because that's where I met you. I didn't know you from, I didn't know if you from anybody. Yeah. Come here. Come on, give me a high five, because they was picking on me really bad. Nah. 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 Ronnie, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Y'all better cut a brother some slack. I know where you stay. Y'all understand what I'm talking about? I just use that as an example. But we, we hear it and see it all the time. People come to church because something went wrong in their life. They feel something they've never felt before. And then all of a sudden things ain't quite so wrong anymore. And we don't see them no more. It's the truth. Lacey, I'll see you that one and raise you another one. If everybody I was raised up with was still here, I'd need a new building right now. Which I'm happy to tell y'all, I've got a little financial report today, and we'll share it with you, but we got almost $20,000 in our building fund right now. <laughs> almost. <laughs> yes, sir. That's right. Shannon and I had a conversation as a matter of fact about two weeks ago about the events. And when you said one of those events, it carries its head. Like what I just threw on Deb and Ashley and Lindsay. <laughs> yeah. But in those dangerous places where the enemy uses inhumane tactics to put to pull us down on the road. Uh-huh. Yep. Sooner than we think. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You're 100% right. But I guess what I want to say is we like to be unified around shouting. We like to be unified around miracles, signs, and wonders. We like to be unified around pickleball. And I got no problem with it. I got no problem. I'm probably going to come out there one of these days when I get my nerve up. But we got so many things that we like to be unified about, but we're supposed to be unified around the word. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I felt a little something hump up right then, but I'm going to go on into the Bible study because it's going to smooth out in just a minute. I know I, I went off the reservation right there, but the question we have to ask ourselves is, why do we think we can keep sinning and get somewhere in God? I know it's, that this is supposed to be 
a different kind of deal. But at the end of the day, when I know who he is, man, we're going to coat it. Man, I want to do it bad, but I'm, I'm going to hold on to it. But I ain't talking about Brother Cody with the muscles this time. I'm talking about the one without the muscles. <laughs> Brother Cody, I can't tell you how many times. I, the other day I tried to text Brother Cody, Pikey and Sister Callie something, and I text Cody Pipkin and Callie something. <laughs> I got to be careful about that. But, uh, man, I, him and I talked about our sweet Aaron today for quite a while. And, Man, I want to bring out some stuff because it would sure fit right now in what I'm talking about, but we're going to save it for another time. But when you want to be right with God and when you want to know him in his fullness, you will give him free access to your entire life and welcome his correction. Sure. You're exactly right. But, but, and that's part of the revelation that I'm talking about right now. And I, I said this some time ago, Brother David, and be glad you sit on the front row sometimes because sometimes I say things that I get double-barreled from back there with them old beady-eyed stuff. <laughs> but I said this, and it's true. The closer you get to God, the more flawed you are. Because we talked about it, he, he's the light. But Sister Crystal, the beautiful thing about this shift that we've got going in here is the more messed up I am, Sister Maria, the, or the more that I see my issues, the greater the blessing is because God is revealing to me where I need to get right. And, where I, and some of it, I... Some of it, I don't need a zap, Brother David. I need the, 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 the sleep rubbed out of my eyes a little bit. And I need to be able to see clearly what I can do in my own life and what I can stop saying and what I can stop looking at and what I can stop listening to and places I can stop going. And it's a blessing. And you want to know why? Because I would argue that you don't ever feel more loved by God than when he takes you to the proverbial woodshed. Y'all don't know about the woodshed, do you? You didn't want daddy to take you to the woodshed. We didn't have a woodshed, but let me tell you something. Don't go into that bathroom that's outdoors over there. Because that was our woodshed. And that's where my daddy took me and tore my tail up when I was bad in church. But the Bible says he chastens those that he loves. And Sister Crystal, when that light starts going off and we start seeing ourselves the right way, that's a love feeling from heaven. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. You know what that means? There's always hope in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter how much the devil writes you off, your family writes you off, the world writes you off, the school writes you off. When you step over into the realm of Jesus Christ of knowing who he is, there's hope. All right, Sister Fran, I need to catch my breath. Go right ahead.
world does it ever make sense. It's kind of like, we read this the other day, and I'm probably not getting done tonight, but I don't care. Because there, there's something flowing in the house. It's kind of like Sister Maria. I, please don't misunderstand me, what I'm about to say. I, I'm not elevating myself in any way, shape, form, or fashion. But when I read that scripture, when Peter denied Jesus the third time, and that rooster started crowing, I know what he felt like. Brother David, I've felt that before. I have felt that you knew this was going to happen, and you knew this was going to happen, and you knew this was going to happen, and I stepped my old ignorant behind off into it, and I heard the rooster crow. But I'm going to tell you what. I also know what he feels like when Jesus came out of that tomb, and he went around, and he came, and he said, all of you disciples, y'all come go with me. You too, Peter. I know what that feels like too, Brother David. I know what that feels like too. I know what it feels like to have embarrassed him and shamed him and let him down and fulfilled those negative prophecies. But I also know, I also know what it's like to hear him call my name and say, GL, you come go with me too. And that's what I hope we're learning in this place tonight. The world been lying on the Lord long enough. It is time for some believers to stand up and to declare him as he is, not as that bad, mean, waiting to smash you and waiting to catch you doing wrong and waiting you to mess up. No, that's not what he is. He came to live, to die and to rise again so I can make it. That's why he did this. Revelation, connection, that's where we're at right now. This means that anyone, First, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 in the New Living Translation, this means that anyone, here we go, Sister Fran, anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. Listen to me now. A new life has begun. But that don't mean that the old you is going to stay dead. Every day, the old you is going to try to rise up. Matter of fact, somebody might say something to you, and before you even know about it, you've done went. Ch -ch -ch. You know, that's what you did right before you just, I'm telling you what. Now, here's what the devil will do. The devil will tell you, Brother Larry, about two of them. Mm -mm. The devil will say, see, you didn't have nothing, man. You didn't have nothing. But what, but what we're teaching you right now trumps that. And the devil's going to say, look at there, you messed up, five old bo. You messed up there, buddy. You didn't really have what you thought. And you can turn around to the devil and say, I did mess up. But that's where our agreement stops. Because I do have what I thought. And I am who I thought I was. Because he says, you don't never say it. You don't get to declare who I am. The devil don't get to declare who I am. I went down in the name of Jesus. That's why it matters. I didn't go down in the name of a father. I didn't go down in the name of a son. I didn't go down in the name of a Holy Ghost. I went down in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the only true living God who walked the face of this earth. And when the devil sees me, he better see Jesus. That's what this revelation that we're talking about does. That's why Bible study is so important. It's because we got to start taking what, I mean, this Bible study, you could. Alan, I'm so happy to see you again here tonight, man. I, 
I'm just telling you, I'm going to start expecting it. I'm just telling you. I like it so much, I'm starting to expect it. But this Bible study in particular, last week and this week, be a good one to wear out. Folding it up and putting it in your pocket and pulling it out. What would happen, Brother Ronnie, if we really would hair lip the devil instead of getting in an argument with him, we would just reach down in that pocketbook or reach down in our back pocket and pop it open. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Bam! Hold on a minute. I know that what I need is somewhere on that paper. I know there's a word that what you're coming at me with, I got the truth. Because see, Brother Christian, the devil knows the Lord. Y'all read that in the Bible? Where, the, where he come up and cast out them devils and them devils started saying stuff like, I know who you are, and he said, shut your mouth. And you know what they did? They shut their mouth. They shut their mouth. Listen, the devil knows everything about the Lord I'm teaching you. He knows everything there is to know about the Lord. That's why he's in the line business. Because if he can make you think anything less of the Lord God Almighty than what is true, he's got you. That's why the scripture says, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I like it. Okay. Oh, the clock is not my friend on Wednesday nights. If I could have figured out some way to turn the Christmas clock when I was a little boy and the Bible study clock and flop them over, I'd be in it to win it right then. Okay. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. How are you going to reconcile them to him? To him? How are you going to do that? He's, he, you see that on there? And God has given us this, given us this task of reconciling people to him. How's that going to happen? We're going to tell them who he is. We're going to show them the connection that we have between him. Because you see, how am I going to show him who he is, Lacey? Huh? By how I behave myself. There you go. There you go. That's, that's how they're going to know him is they're going to see him first in me. So I reveal him, declare him, manifest the connection with him, and stop sinning. Why do I stop sinning? Say, oh, you're saying we got to be perfect. First off, I never said that. The Bible doesn't say that. Yeah, that go on to perfection is talking about going on to maturity. That's not talking about going on to perfection. But here's what the Bible does say. I want you to want to be perfect. That's why I said, my little children, I write these things to you that you sin not. But if you sin, we have an advocate Oh, I don't think y'all got that. Jesus Christ, the righteous. And what is his advocacy? I got this in my notes. Advocate the same as an attorney. Do you feel like that Jesus is in the presence of God arguing on your behalf? He's not. Let me tell you what. Everything you needed for somebody to stand in the gap for you. That's why he said it's finished. Because the work he came to do was already done. And the work he came to do for us was the work he did in the flesh. 
So, yes, Alan, he is still arguing for us, but it ain't a new argument. It's an old argument. Huh? And the old argument is, I came into this world. Huh? I lived. I was subject to every temptation that you've been subject to. And I didn't give in, not one time. You remember, oh, Lord. Do you remember what it said? When he ascended, he took captivity captive. Which means we've got hope to live an overcoming life. Are, are y'all understanding what I'm saying? The work that Jesus did for our redemption, he did here on earth. That is the intercession that he did for us. He who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God. But the work was done up and ended on Calvary. That's where our remission of sins comes from is the shedding of his blood. But the new life comes from the resurrection. Is everybody all right? It's okay. I, I, I got to get here. But he's given us the ministry of reconciliation. They need to know who he is. And we've already established that many people don't have any idea who he really is. To a lot of people, he's a baby in a manger and a bloody mess on the cross. And everything in between, they just ain't that interested in. We declare him. We connect with him. And we help him get rid of the sin problem. Look here. Take me to verse 21. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin. So here's how we need to look at this. I'm fixing to quit. I feel like I've lost us. Here's how we need to look at this. Everything you see of Calvary, whether it's in the passion of Jesus Christ, whether it's in some painting, whether it's something you read, Everything you see, the punishment he bore, that's what we deserve. Because, see, the sin that he was punished for was mine. Oh, let it sink in. And you really think, you reconcile that with the erroneous mentality that so many people have in the religious world. As if, as if it, he was just going to give up on you like that. Huh? A lot of people think it. Walking on eggshells. They don't do anything for God because they're afraid to step out of their comfort zone of what they got going right now. And how many, Brother Johnny, I, I'm going to use Brother Johnny. I remember me, him and I had a bunch of conversations and I blew his mind one day because he said, I want to come back to the Lord, but I'm afraid I'm going to fail. Y'all know what I said to him? Well, let me just get rid of your free, a fear. You're going to fail. You're going to mess up. You're going to make mistakes. But you know the kind of mistakes we're making, Sister Crystal, are those moving us toward Jesus Christ. Because we found that there ain't no safer place for me to fail than in the church. There's no safer place for me to fail than among people that believe the word like I believe the word. That have the revelation of Jesus Christ like I have the revelation of Jesus Christ. Don't, please don't misunderstand and certainly don't misconstrue because I know y'all see this as a platform I see it as the top rope all of our people you know what I'm talking about don't you Blake you wasn't born with the Holy Ghost 
That's exactly right. I'm coming off of it with an elbow on you. If you misconstrue what I'm saying, I do not preach. Just go live however you want to, willy-nilly. Just keep on going and sinning. I, I don't preach that. But I also don't preach that we crucify people who do fail. I mean what I say. There's no safer place. There should be no safer place to fail than in the church. Because he was writing, Brother David, when he said, my little children, that's the church. I write these things to you that you sin not. So the truth is, you don't have to sin every day. You don't have to, I don't have to, we don't have to sin every day. And I know some people build their entire theology on everybody sins every day. You don't have to. He's given us, he's given us everything we need, Brother David, to live a godly life every day. It's there. And we've got the Holy Ghost, which won't let you sin in peace. The Holy Ghost, when the Lord corrects you and leads you and directs you, and you go and do something opposite, he ain't going to just sit by and let you do it on easy street. Now, that's the difference in conviction and condemnation. See, the Spirit convicts us. The devil condemns us. And did y'all remember what I told you the difference was in conviction and condemnation? Condemnation says you're no good. Conviction says you're better than that. Conviction's drawing you up. Condemnation slamming you down. Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, paid the price for our sins. And I want you to know as I, as I quit, all of them, Brother Blake, all of them, Brother Cody. This is Brother Cody with the muscles. Though they're slipping. Just want to let you know that. What's that song, baby? You think you've made the ultimate mistake. Hmm? The, the song says, there's bigger sins than that beneath the blood. Darker deeds by far that he's forgiven people of. Oh, I, I, don't, I didn't come tonight. I feel like I need to take all the mission girls to McDonald's or something. <laughs> but I didn't come tonight to be ugly or damnation, but I came to reveal a, to us a Savior. A Savior. How prophetic it was when the shepherds are tending the sheep in the fields. What did it say? Keeping watch over their flocks by night. Suddenly there shone a great light around about them and a heavenly host saying, For unto you glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. A Savior. A Savior which is Christ the Lord. Here's what we're going to do. Let's see, next Wednesday, I'll be here. We are getting ready to go on vacation. Thank you for honoring my wife. Everything Sister Callie said was true. And she doesn't know how true it is. And I hope someday that you all are able to get a glimpse into the transformation that is happening in my wife's life a relationship with God, with me, with our children. Watching God work is amazing. We're, we're going to go July the 29th, which we couldn't go then. July the 29th, Brother David, and I can't believe it's been this long. She and I will be married 30 years 
July the 29th. We got married right here in this church. And we're going to Alaska on July the 28th through July the 6th. So I, I just want you to be prepared. J yeah, I, I was a whole year. Yeah. June the 28th through July the 6th. I, I don't know if I can be gone seven days, let alone a whole year. But I said that to say next week we'll be right back where we're at. Bring your handout back with you. And um, I will be gone, but we, we've got more than qualified people. We, one time I was gone, I may have already told you all this, but I like it, so I tell it quite often. One time I was gone, and Brother David taught on a Wednesday night, man, and he just brought it. And uh, I'm ready, about ready for him to do that again. But I got back to church. One of our dear saints said, Brother GL, you need to be gone more often. <laughs> Brother David did a really good job. <laughs> I said, well, I make my wife happy. I'll go get on one another one of them cruises. But anyway, I hope you've received and are receiving Okay, tell it. We happen to fall in behind you, yeah. We did. She was waving like this. And you ignored us the whole time. That's it, that's it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the Lord forgot to tell Sister Amanda and I, just go on, I'm, I'm with her right now. <laughs> but I, I, thank you for saying that. I want to say this real quickly before we leave. There's been something special in all of our services recently. And I, I'm not going to have them stand or anything like that right now. But there are several people in our church that have taken it on themselves to come here and pray outside of our regularly scheduled prayer and our regularly scheduled services. Matter of fact, often there are people here praying. And that's why God is moving. And if you're so inclined to be a part of that, Feel free. Matter of fact, we got so many people coming and going that on a weekly basis, the whole church is wide open, unlocked doors and everything. And I quit worrying about it. But I want to tell you, when Zion travails, she brought forth her children. We're not just in a season of favor. We're in a season of favor because we've got some people that have decided 
to up their commitment and up their desire for revival. And they put their money where their mouth is, so to speak. And they come down here and pray and seek after the face of God. It's going to be a beautiful day when it all comes together. Two Sundays ago, we had 161 on a Sunday morning. And that is almost the number we need to plan to build. If you wait till you go over 80% of your capacity, you've waited too long. And you'll start losing people. I know that's kind of scary, but I'm telling you, God is moving. Stand with me if you would. Thank you for your patience and, and putting up with me tonight. Ladies of the mission, y'all know I love you. <laughs> Lindsay, it's good to see you, girl. If I, if I don't say it's good to see you, Lindsay, she'd be going and talking about me. Not, not really, but we love the mission. We we love Sister Miss Jane, and and that this that was not a slam at all, but it was the truth overall. You agreeing with me? Well, I'm talking to you. Okay, okay. But do you understand the need for revelation of who Jesus is? Because it's going to keep you when you don't even think you got the Holy Ghost no more. And trust me when I tell you, that day will come. That day will come when you struggle with your emotions and struggle with your feelings. And there's going to have to be something real you can grab a hold of. Next Wednesday, bring your hand out. Lord, I love you tonight. I thank you for this great people. I thank you for the spirit that I feel flowing in here, the revelation that I feel flowing in here. I'm thankful that we're learning to know who you are in your fullness and, and more love and more power and more authority and more beauty. It's a beautiful thing to learn who you are. I pray, God, that we won't just leave this here, but we'll take it with us and we'll study more and we'll learn more and we'll pray more. And I pray that burden gets upon each of us. Thank you, God, for the word tonight. Thank you for what you're doing, for what you will do. I pray, God, you bring us back all here safe Sunday morning. Let us have a great time. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.